IP version 6 address format. The IP version 6 address format looks like this. IP version 4 was in decimal format, while IP version 6 is in hexadecimal format, which means you'll have characters ranging from 0 to 9 and A to F. The letter A represents the decimal value 10, and the letter F represents the decimal value 15. So 0 to 15 is the range of hexadecimal format. IP version 4 address was 32 bits in length, while an IP version 6 address is 128 bits in length. The IP version 6 address is written in 8 groups. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 groups of hexadecimal characters. After every 4 characters, you have a colon. So 8 groups separated by colons. Every character that you see here can be represented by 4 binary bits. So you have a total of 8 groups. Every group has 4 characters, so which means 8 into 4 is 32 characters. Every character can be represented by 4 binary bits. 32 times 4 is 128. 128 bit is the length of an IP version 6 address. That's about the address format of IP version 6. Let's look at some of the rules of writing IP version 6 addresses. I have an example IP version 6 address written here. It's a very simple IP version 6 address, so we can understand the rules in a much more simple manner. The first rule says leading zeros in a group can be discarded. Let's apply this rule to this IP address. So if we remove the leading zeros, it's going to look like this. The first one does not have any leading zeros, so 2001. And then the first three leading zeros can be discarded, so you're left with a zero. We can again discard the first three leading zeros, so you're left with a zero. The same thing applies here, you're left with a zero. And then 4, 8, B5. And then you can discard the three leading zeros, you're left with a zero. Again a zero and then 9177. That's how the IP address would look after applying rule 1. The second rule says any one group of two or more zeros can be replaced with colon colon. Remember the word any one group of two or more zeros. This is important. In our case, we have two groups of two or more zeros. This is the first group and this is the second group. Both these groups have two or more zeros. However, we are allowed to only replace one group with colon colon. So you can write this address in two different ways. This is the first one, 2001. And then we'll replace these three zeros with colon colon. So colon colon. And then you write the rest of it. So 4, 8, excuse me, 4, 8, B5. 0, 0. Remember, you've done it once, so you can do it one more time. 9, 1, 7, 7. That's one way of writing it. Because there are two groups of zeros, we can also replace this group of zeros, and it would look like this. 2001. We'll leave this untouched. 0, 0, 0, 4, 8, B5. And then we can replace these two zeros with colon, colon, 9, 1, 7, 7. That's the second way of writing this. These two things, or these two addresses, represent the same thing. The last one, now these two things are connected. The last one says colon colon cannot be used more than once. So in this address, you cannot go ahead and replace this with colon colon, and in this address, you cannot replace this with colon colon. If you're wondering why, there's a reason behind it. Let's say you can replace all groups of zeros with colon colon. If that was the case, the address would look like this, 2001, colon, colon, B5, again, colon, colon, 9177. This is how the address would look if we did not have the limitation of doing it only once. Now, there are five groups of zeros in the original address. If your address looked like this, the operating system would not know where three zeros need to be applied and where the remaining two zeros can be applied. You could put three here and two here, or you could put two groups of zeros here and three groups of zeros here. To avoid a situation like this, we have this rule that says colon colon cannot be used 
more than once. I hope this was easy for you to understand. Let's quickly look at the rules one more time. So the first rule says all leading zeros in a group can be discarded. In our example we had five groups of zeros, we discarded all the leading zeros and we were left with only one zero for every group. Now there's one more thing I want to point out. If your group looks like this, say 2001 is the first two groups of your IP address and you're applying rule number one, you can discard these three zeros and you would be left with only the eight. So going back to the same example, we applied the first rule and discarded the leading zeros. The second rule says any one group of two or more zeros can be replaced with a colon colon. In our example we have two groups of two or more zeros so you can write this in two ways. You can replace the first group of zeros and you would get this address or you could replace the second group of zeros with colon colon and you'd get this address. And the last thing to remember is colon colon can be used only once. That's all about the rules for IPv6 addresses. Let's now look at the different IPv6 addresses. IPv6 addresses. The first one is unspecified. Now when a computer boots up, it has no address assigned to itself. That's when it uses the unspecified address to talk to others. If the computer is on a network that has DHCP enabled, the unspecified address is used before it gets an address assigned through DHCP. The unspecified address is denoted by colon colon slash 128. Remember from the last topic we discussed, a colon colon is used to represent two or more groups of zeros. In this case, it's only colon colon, which means the entire address is just zeros. This is same as 0.0.0.0, .0 in IP version 4. Now remember, you should never manually assign this address to a host. What happens if you still did that? Well, the router will not forward a packet that comes from an address colon colon slash 128. The next one is loopback. If you remember from the last video about IP version 4, we talked about loopback addresses. A loopback address is used to talk to itself. It is represented as colon colon 1 slash 128, which means it has all zeros and the last character is a 1. This is same as 127.0.0.1 in IP version 4. The next address is a link local address. Let me clear the board for a second. Let's say you have a computer that does not have an IP address assigned to itself and there is no DHCP on the network. That's when the computer will assign itself an address known as the link local address. The range for this address is F E80 slash 10. If you're wondering what the 10 means, it means the first 10 bits of the address have to be fixed. Converting the F into binary, you would get four ones. The E can be written as 1110. 8 can be written as 1000. Now that's 12 bits. The first 10 bits of a link local address have to look like this. That's what the slash 10 means. The link local address is same as a PIPA in IP version 4. It stands for Automatic Private IP Address Configuration. In IPv4, if a computer does not have an IP address assigned to it and there is no DHCP server, it self assigns an address. The operating system assigns an address in the range 169.254.0.0 slash 16. Now this address is used for communicating with others in IP version 4. This is same as FE80 slash 10 in IP version 6. Unique local addresses. Just like the way it sounds, unique local addresses are unique and local addresses used for LAN communication. We can compare this with RFC 1918 addresses that we discussed in IP version 4. These addresses are private IP addresses that cannot be routed on the internet. The range for this address would be FC00 slash 7, which means the first 7 bits have to be fixed. Converting F in binary, you would get 1111. C stands for 12 in decimal, and 12 can be represented as 1100. That's 8 bits. The first 7 bits of a unique local address have to look like this. Global Unicast Address 
Global unicast addresses are publicly routable addresses, which means you can use them on the internet. The first three bits of a global unicast address have to be 0, 0, 001. Let me put that here. The first three bits always have to be 0, 0, 001. Now we discussed previously that every character that you see here can be represented by four binary bits. The first three binary bits are set to 0, 0, 001 and the fourth one can be anything. It can be a 0 or a 1. If you put a 0 here, you get the first character as a 2. If you put a 1 here, you get the first character as a 3. And then there's three characters remaining in the first group. These three characters can be represented by 12 binary bits. If you put all of them as zeros, you would get 2, 0, 0, 0. And if you put all of them as 1s, you get 3, F, F, F. That's the range of a global unicast address. 2000 colon 3 all the way up to 3 FFF colon 3. The 3 means that the first three bits are set to 0, 0, 001. That's a global unicast address. Multicast addresses. Multicast addresses are used to send data to many computers at the same time. These are mainly used for sending routing updates. The range of multicast address is FF 0, 0 slash 8. The slash 8 means that the first 8 bits have to be fixed. Convert the F into binary and you get 1111. Convert the second F and you get 1111. That's 8 bits and that should be the first 8 bits of a multicast address. So these are the different addresses in IP version 6. Let's now look at the IP version 6 address types. There's three different types of addresses in IP version 6. Unicast, multicast, and anycast. Unicast means one-to-one -one communication. You have a source, you have a destination, that's unicast communication. Multicast means one to many. So you have one computer that's trying to communicate with multiple hosts, that's multicast communication. Anycast, like we discussed in the beginning, is one to nearest. So you have a source here, you have a destination, you have a few destinations here. Anycast would send the packet to the closest destination. So anycast can be written as one to nearest or one to closest. Closest. All right. Broadcast traffic has been completely eliminated in IP version 6. That's about the IP version 6 address types. You have three of them, unicast, multicast, and anycast. Let's now look at IP version 6 subnetting. IP version 6 subnetting is kind of similar to IP version 4 subnetting, but on a larger scale. We don't need to dive too much in detail about IP version 6 subnetting. We'll just take a high level look at the subnetting process. Out of the 128 bits of an IP version 6 address, the first 48 bits is the network address. It is also known as the routing prefix. The routing prefix or the network address will be assigned to you by your service provider. Your internet service provider will give you the network address. The next 16 bits is the subnet bits. The last 64 bits is the interface ID, also known as the host bits. That's how the 128 bits of an IP version 6 are divided. Now for every routing prefix, you have 16 bits of subnet. So you have a routing prefix. For that particular routing prefix or that particular network address, you have 16 subnet bits, which means for every routing prefix, you have 2 to the power 16 subnets. For every subnet, you have 64 bits of host, which means for every subnet out of these 2 power 16 subnets, you have 2 power 64 possible host addresses. Can you imagine that? How big is that? For every routing prefix, you have 2 to the power 16 subnets. For every subnet, you have 2 to the power 64 host addresses. That's massive, isn't it? That's all about IP version 6 subnetting that you need to know at the JNCIA level. So just to do a quick recap, in this video, we looked at the basics of IP version 6. We looked at IP version 6 header, and we also looked at the IP version 6 address format and the rules for IP version 6. We then discussed the different IP version 6 addresses 
And finally, we touched a little bit upon IP version 6 subnetting. In the next video, we're going to look at the Juno's device portfolio. Let me put that here, Juno's portfolio. portfolio. We'll look at the different routers, switches, and firewalls available with Juniper. That's the plan for the next video. I'm really excited to see you there. I'd like to thank you for watching.